employees. When did a new employee take over the entire company? So when I was working at this up and coming tech company as a sales rep, the only sales rep, our boss hired on a freshy programmer. Our company dealt with the rising industry of carrier billing, and that's about all I understood on the more technical end of the spectrum. Our boss, and the head of the company, was much the same way, at least from what I heard. Not really aware of how much time and effort certain things took, and a bit rude about things, if they didn't meet his standard. The new guy really didn't like this, but at first I kinda got the impression that he wasn't going to rock the boat. That was before his volume of work was directly criticized for being an imaginative, and not to any one standard, let alone a prolific company in front of the entire staff. This was nothing new. I'd been there a while, and anyone new to the company went through similar treatment. It cold been groundbreaking, extraordinary work, and he would have gotten the same. Our boss's way of inspiring high levels of work from his workers was cruel, but effective. Until, of course, he did it to this new guy. I found out shortly afterwards that there was a conspiracy of sorts to leave the company and begin a new one under this new employee. Now, at first everyone kinda scoffed this thing off, but as the day wore on and everyone grew more and more sick of our boss's shit, it was seriously being considered. We jockedly called it the revolution behind his back. Like some sort of coup, one day half of the staff, including me, simply didn't show up to work. I remember getting an angry voice email from our boss, demanding to know what was going on. We all agreed on leaving him in complete darkness. The new guy emerged as the head of the new company, which, spurred on by the motivation we all had, totally left the old company in the dust. Wouldn't have worked if it was some mega corporation or something, but it was pretty awesome anyways. Our boss wasn't really the head of the company, really, but she was the head manager for a local restaurant chain I worked for up in Oregon for a few years. She was around sparingly, and when she happened to show up to any of our locations, she just seemed really out of touch. Wasn't a bad person, but just didn't know what she was doing. It was fine by me, we were better suited to run the business without her being intrusive anyways. We had this new guy join the crew about a month before the incident. He'd worked management before, according to him, and had fallen on rough times, which brought him here. He was hired on as the assistant manager, a far cry from what he'd previously been doing. Super knowledgeable about the inner workings of a business, obviously, and treated us pretty well. Anyways, the financiers of the business decided to stop by and take a tour of each of the locations, just to see how they were and, of course, our boss decides this is a day that she needs to show up, and her and the new assistant manager end up conducting the tour, while they were in the kitchen. The financiers ended up asking specifics about where the restaurants were getting their food shipments. All of our food was sourced locally and super fresh, and caught our boss off guard. If she'd just asked the assistant manager, it would've probably gone over fine, but that's not what she did. Instead she lied about the source of our food, making up a company off the top of her head. It was seen though pretty easily, and the new guy chimed in with the correct answer, confirming their suspicions. They kept going with the tour, and a few days later both our boss and assistant manager had been replaced. Apparently the old boss had been fired, her lack of knowledge super clear, and replaced by our former assistant manager. It paid to be aware, I guess. From then on, things were way, way more smooth. It's pretty surprising how much having a competent boss actually affects the workers on an individual level. Things are still way better to this day. This has less to do with the new employee, and more with the boss, but I guess it qualifies, so I'll tell the story anyways. I was working for a custom woodworking shop, the kind that ships to pretty high profile customers. Real bougie shit. Anyways, our boss was kind of a standoff type, real distant, not one for social gatherings or anything like that, and I always sensed something suspicious about him. We'd often spend the days at work joking about his undercover life, whether it be as a secret agent, Russian whistleblower, or something else equally crazy slash stupid. I guess looking back on it, it wasn't nearly as crazy as we'd thought. So one day we are working on this pain in the ass like, totem thing, like I said real bougie, and all of a sudden we start hearing a ton of sirens. Our workplace is out in the middle of nowhere, so they are definitely here for something at our work. 
Everyone stops what they're doing to go up to the front, where the cops have basically staked out the place, and start asking for our boss. We check his office, obviously, where I knew he'd been not like 15 minutes earlier, and find nothing, so they start tearing the place up looking for him. I overheard a conversation between one of the officers and the new assistant manager, apparently he was talking to, and having relations with several underage girls, absolutely disgusting. At this point we are looking with the cops, trying to find him. He was caught hiding in the woods just outside our workplace, looking for a good time to get to his car. Needless to say we never saw him again, and good riddance. The assistant manager I mentioned earlier replaced him, which is I guess why this meets the requirements. There's this arts and crafts shop that I used to work for that had some pretty crazy drama shit go down right before I left. The original owner of the shop had died a few months back and handed over her business to her daughter, who could be best described with a wide variety of four letter words. I'll leave it to your imagination. The other ladies I worked with, including me, couldn't stand her presence for more than a few minutes. She was one of those types that couldn't resist to monitor and hover over you constantly, even when you were doing a job you'd been doing for the past decade without issue. She had a lot of terrible things to say about her mother as well. I don't know how true they were, but to us, it was pretty infuriating. She'd been a decent boss. So as you can probably tell this ended up escalating to a boiling point with one of the more senior ladies blowing up in her face. Stupid be asterisk asterisk asterisk, you think you can just walk in here and tell me what to do? That kind of stuff. They had a heated argument in the middle of the store, which ended up in Janus, the senior worker, getting fired. She stormed out, and I didn't hear from her for a couple weeks afterwards. Things simmered down a little bit and she began looking for a replacement for Janus, which wasn't going super well. New employees were as turned off by the prospect of working with her as Janus was. Several more weeks passed until finally a new girl was hired on. She'd worked previously at a fast food place, so she was used to getting yelled at and berated. So things were pretty consistent for a while. That's when we had the second blow up. They were in the aisle with all of the charcoal pencils and stuff when it happened. The boss cornered her and started asking her all kinds of questions about things that were said behind her back. We talked behind it constantly, and to our surprise the new girl didn't back down at all, telling her everything. This pretty predictably escalated into another screaming match, with the boss eventually storming out this time. I guess she'd had enough, because within a few days, the business was in the hands of one of the older ladies, who quickly shoved the responsibility to the new girl. I left pretty shortly after that, and probably for the best, since everything seemed to go to shit. So I work on a military base as a civilian, as a tech aide for a library. Our director had worked there for nearly 10 years, before getting a pretty crazy opportunity to work at a higher position, so they started doing interviews for her position. I thought about applying, I'd worked there about 6 years, and was second only to the director, but one of the prerequisites was having a masters, which I didn't have. Only one of the women who were currently working at the library were qualified at all, and that was the newest woman. I'll dub her Mrs. P. Mrs. P was super meek, and in a landscape of disappearing libraries, an outspoken and confrontational director was required. There was another applicant from another base, but she wasn't really an option. The caveat with her was obviously spending thousands of dollars on the government's dime to get her down here. Nobody was picking that choice. So Mrs. P ended up getting selected, much to everyone's dismay. And get this, all of this went down a week and a half, before we were due for a visit from the lieutenant. Colonel, for a customary tour. These are the kinds of tours that usually dictate whether we keep our jobs for another year or not, so nobody was pleased to see that Mrs. P was going to be leading the charge. I tried my best to teach her and coerce her into something resembling presentable, but it seemed like any time I raised a question that we hadn't discussed previously, she froze. It was what it was, and several practice runs later, I just gave up. So the day of the tour arrived, and the turnout ended up being worse than I'd anticipated. Not only was the lieutenant, colonel there, but our commander, the major, showed up too. This extra element frightened Mrs. P even more, and I expected the worst. 
The tour started with a little walk around the perimeter, where luckily they only asked basic questions. How many patrons did we usually have a day? How many of them were military? Etc. So things were looking alright. The trouble started, as soon as we entered the library and the major asked about one of the displays we had set up for Halloween. I could see the immediate panic set in on her face. I jumped in, out of turn, and saved her. It was what I was there for, after all, but you could see the analyzing face of the colonel, begin to try, and pry for, why she had to look to me for the answers. The tour continued, but now we were getting grilled. They started asking questions like what's the upkeep cost for the utilities and other bizarre questions even I didn't know the answer to. By the time it was over, we were both mentally exhausted, and the major pulled me aside. In confidentiality, he congratulated me on a great tour, and to keep our new director out of trouble. So, I guess a little ploy worked. I ride with an independent moving company, a crew of 6 guys, and our boss was this older guy who owned the truck we'd used to. Well, move shit. We were in the middle of moving thousands of pounds of furniture from New Hampshire to Florida, where an older couple was planning on retiring, when during the move, our boss's leg was crushed by their safe. Dude was already getting on in years, so he decided to forego the trip and hand over the reins to a guy named Jeremy, who was new to the crew, but not to moving. Dude is super take charge, so everything is going pretty smooth during the pack up and the first few hours of the trip, before we even notice a semblance of things going to his head. The first sign was declaring, at a rest stop, that we had to keep a guy on the truck at all times, bizarrely, which he claimed, was a policy from the place he used to work at. No big deal, we went along with it, someone just chilled in the seat, while everyone else did their business, then we continued on our way. At some point in Virginia, we stopped again for the night, where he insisted again that someone sleep with the truck. I wasn't in the mood to argue, so I agreed. Late that night I was woken up by someone fucking with the back of the truck. In all my years I'd never witnessed anyone try to break in our truck before, so I couldn't help but think well, maybe we should be sleeping in the truck more often. I grabbed our handgun out of the glove compartment, and carefully made my way to the back of the truck, where the scuffing and fiddling with the lock grew even louder. I shouted something like hands up, M-O-T-H-E-R-F asterisk 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 yar, and stepped out, raising the gun at him. In the pale light of the parking lot I could make out just enough of his face, to get really really angry. It was Jeremy. He looked at me with this stupid grin on his face, and then clapped my shoulder with his hand, congratulating me. See, that's exactly what we need to be doing. Protect our assets. I about split his head open on the concrete right then and there. Apparently, according to him, he wanted to prove to us that someone sleeping in the truck was an effective deterrent against people looking to rob movers. Of course, I yelled at him in the parking lot about how I almost blew a hole in him on accident and that, as long as I'd been in, he was the only person who'd ever tried to rob the truck. That shut him up, and we didn't hear too much out of him for the rest of the trip. Luckily, by the time we'd made our way to Florida, our actual boss was nearly fully recovered, and was able to take charge again. I don't know if I cold dealt with that guy for any more trips, 